What is going on guys, Sage Els here. So today will be the start to my weekly videos, giving my thoughts and I guess summary breakdowns, whatever you want to call it, on the Chainsaw Man anime adaptation, because it's honestly too enjoyable for me not to talk about the episodes. And with the anime just kicking off recently, there's no real need for me to go as in detail as I probably do with my Attack on Time breakdowns, but I'll drop some knowledge here and there without spoiling anything from time to time. But the overall goal of these videos is enjoyment and to just have fun. With that being said, if that sounds like something you're interested in, smash that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on and let's go. So we kick off episode 3 following the mess made by Power after she literally took down the sea cucumber devil Assassin's Creed style last episode. And both her and Denji are being reprimanded by Makima for a lousy job since they are both public safety devil hunters and when they get in the way of a civilian devil hunter's work, it's considered obstruction of justice. But yeah, believe it or not that bum who was camping inside the phone box is actually a devil hunter and it seems that Denji's statement of he can put up with crazy as long as the girl's hot enough is exactly what's going to be happening with Power going forward. Because if Power is anything she's definitely crazy. But she does know her place when it comes to Makima, she didn't want any problems with her whatsoever and she immediately acknowledged her mistakes and promised to do better. Moving on from the incident, Power and Denji are just hanging around and getting soft drinks and a live orb goes off in Denji's head that tells him he can't be hanging around a liar chick like Power. And he's definitely right about that because the lie that Power actually told was just crazy, like it was so unprovoked, it, it was completely crazy. And I mean it's good he's learning this frame 1 because the way things are going she's a potential obstacle to Denji's bag, the upgrade from the trenches with Pochita to getting soft drinks and having a somewhat decent life of touching boobs being Denji's new primary goal is too much to give up on. So it's good he's at least wary of Power's actions and isn't ignorant. And as some say, after God fear women, am I right? So we learned that Power has a hate for humans due to her natural devil instinct and she also has a hate for devils because the devil made off with her pet cat, Nyawi or Nyanko depending on what your subs are looking like, but before she managed to get her cat back she was caught by Makima and forced into devil hunter slavery like the rest of the devils who are caught and work for public safety. And let's be honest, at first Denji really doesn't give a damn about what she's saying, but fortunately for him his self interest of wanting to touch boobs ends up aligning with Power's need of wanting to save her pet cat, since she offers him the chance to touch her chest if he saves her cat from the devil that stole it. And the way this man Denji switches up is absolutely hilarious. He straight up 180s and says, how can they do that to a poor cat? I'll murder that devil. So I guess we all know how to get Denji motivated and who can blame him since he doesn't know any better. And saying this with hindsight, he really doesn't know any better. How the fuck you get by, bitch? So Denji manages to get day leave with power since she's a fiend and needs to be requested to leave public safety headquarters and the two of them start making the journey to retrieve her cat and the plan basically goes like this. So we've got the location, he recognises me, he'll kill the cat if he sees me, so you pull up, bust out the chainsaws, you get to touch my boobs, everyone goes home happy. Which definitely sounds simple enough. And I almost forgot to mention, seeing this animated it actually made me laugh because I forgot Denji literally just has an axe on the chair in broad daylight on the train. Like if anyone got on that then stops, I'm telling you they just walk straight out because that's actually just tapped on so many levels. But before we get into how that whole event goes down, we get some more insight into how public safety is running things and the higher up so to speak are telling Makima not to get attached to the new dog, also known as Denji, that she brought into work. Train them, use them, I don't want to see any of that sentimental attachment and crap, that was pretty much the message they were giving Makima. And Makima's literally just, just smiling, which is pretty weird. And let me not even lie, this is how the real world gets down as well, they really don't care about you. They only care about your use in the field and once you can't meet requirements, they pack you up. I don't know if they call people dogs though, but personally if I was being talked about like this behind my back and I found out, I'm handing in my resignation same day. Customer service, give me straight to the bitch bro. Fuck a two week noise. But unfortunately, Denji doesn't have that luxury. And we also get a little Devil's 101 lesson from Makima about how a devil's strength relates to how much fear a devil's name has. So Denji's looking like a real prospect right now for Makima since he can turn into a chainsaw devil. And we just have Aki straight up hating in the car. Like, come on, man. I know you don't like him, but talking about him behind his back like that was kind of crazy. And if you do want further expansion on what Makima was talking about, you can check out this video on the channel. So we then arrive back to Denji and Power and they've pretty much arrived at the location where everything's about to go down. And as I said before, Denji doesn't know better because there's no way you go somewhere with a girl and end up in a location like this and you aren't getting lined up. A house on top of the hill, pure countryside, you're being set up buddy. But unfortunately our young protagonist has to learn this the hard way. Stop but this is definitely a crucial character development moment for him. 
So after getting the drop on Denji, Power drags his body into the house, and we see the Bat Devil <laughs> covered in darkness. And I don't know how Mappa managed to make Bat look somewhat decent because I'm gonna no be way, honest, boy. the Bat Devil is one of the ugliest boy, devils no in the way, whole manga. Boy. But Mappa actually made him look kind of decent. So we learned that Power had to deal with the Bat Devil, that if she gave him a human to eat so he could regenerate his injuries, he would release her cat Meowie. But literally in the same fashion that Power Snake Denji, the Bat did to her, and we ended up with Power and her cat getting eaten. So the Bat Devil flies off and Denji is clinging on for dear life in his quest of getting his boobs back. And I have to give it to Denji, when he's motivated, he is literally motivated. This man Denji literally drank the Bat Devil's blood to regenerate, and when I say that's disgusting, that's disgusting. Even the Bat Devil was baffled that Denji drank his blood and I don't blame him because the Bat Devil is one sick motherfucker. He was talking about cleansing his palate with children, gargling their blood, feasting on a beefy man, having a virgin as an appetizer and devouring a pregnant woman. Even for devils, the Bat Devil is just a different level of sick. But his wordplay is crazy though, I'll give it to him. But after drinking his blood, Denji thinks back to that one time Pochita went missing and how he felt and he figures that Power probably feels the same way about losing Miaoi. So I guess in addition to retrieving his boobs, he wants to help her out a bit. And then we enter a pure Sakuga fest for the fight scene between Denji and the Bat. There was no sorts of censoring, it was a bloody gory fight. And I really liked the animation for this fight scene, it was really smooth. The use of CGI fit in perfectly with the 2D scenes as well as the music choices, they were really epic. So there wasn't really much I could ask for for the Denji vs Bat level fight. And we get to see a few of Denji's morality points in the fight with him prioritizing women and not giving a damn about saving men. Like he literally dashed that poor man's car straight at the Bat Devil, which was pretty fucked up to say the least. And we had this really epic moment of the Bat Devil conjuring up some kind of spell before unleashing his sound wave attack and Denji pumping himself up using his frustration of not being able to cop a feel as a motivator. But Denji absolutely destroys the Bat Devil as the episode ends with him posing within the blood shower as a result of the killing blow which was absolutely epic to see. So that's going to be all for today, but next week we should be having another pretty hype Chainsaw Man episode, so stay tuned for that. And definitely let me know if you want more of these chilled, laid back kind of summary videos on the channel. Um, I'm not really scripting these, I'm just going off the dome with them. And I want to make it a priority to get my personality out there a little bit more in the future. And I think these videos will help me to do just that. So leave a like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.